So it is a beautiful Friday morning here in the western side of the world, but all the way on the other side of the globe is the ACGHK Expo, also known as the Anime Com and Gaming Hong Kong Expo. And of course, we were talking about it just yesterday with all the product that was being set up, but as of this recording right now, their first day on Friday is winding down. It is now the evening in Hong Kong. And we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. But today we're going to talk about essentially Farai model and the Kuru Kara Kuri stuff that is done through Flame Toys and their incredible products. I know that sometimes they could be controversial, but I love everything they do, stylized or otherwise. I don't care. That stuff never affected me. Um... But let's talk about here some stuff that they had on display and some designs that they had on display. So let's first talk about these designs here. They have some brand new Farai model stuff designs on display here. They got here Bludgeon, they got here Bonsai Tron, and they got Black Arachnia from Beast Wars. And these look fantastic. Now what's great is, is that when they first showed off these images early in the morning, uh, we just had some photos of them, but two of the concepts have been sent in HD, so now we have those very nicely. I'll post them on Twitter also so you guys could zoom in on that. Unfortunately, it's not the Black Arachnia one. It's the other two. So we got Bonsai Tron and we got Bludgeon here. It's funny because these two have also been in the past notoriously linked as repaint retools of each other. Obviously, that wasn't the case back in the day. One was an action master and one was a pretender, but you know how time is. Time passes and things change. Bludgeon looks incredible. Again, a crazy stylized buff version of him. Uh, he even has the little Yamato uh, flag that samurais used to carry into battle. Whole bunch of cool little concepts. Very, very leaning heavily on the samurai armor concept. Looks really good. I like he even comes with his sword. Something that is crazy because, you know, when you think about back in the day, the sword was really a Simon Furman idea. The toy originally never came with one. And even the name, Bludgeon, you know, you'd expect a, a, a blunt object as his weapon, not a samurai sword. He would have been called something like Slasher or anything like that. Hell, even something like Bonsai Tron would have probably been a, a better name for him when you really think about it. But hey, history has a way of uh, changing things up and, you know, talented people like Simon Furman bring life to a character that would have been just a boring pretender shell that looks like Skeletor when everything's said and done. But so this is cool. I really like this a lot. Cool design. I'm very curious how the final product is going to look like, but it's definitely going to be something I'm going to keep an eye on. I really love these Farai model kits. They're very affordable, and how they look is spectacular. I'm not expecting transforming product from this. I'm expecting just really cool looking model kits or action figures that could be posed and displayed of iconic characters. If I wanted a transforming bludgeon, we have a whole bunch, and we're probably going to have a whole bunch more in the future. This is something that's more of a unique take. And speaking of a unique take, let's talk about the action master man himself of Bonsai Tron. And it's the same thing. They're going for a very similar kind of samurai motif while still taking cues from the original action master design and little cues here and there from his uh, retool repaints that he had afterwards sharing with a, a bludgeon mold he comes with his sword he comes with a little gun so again invoking stuff that was present in the original action master toy very nice design that cool 90s color scheme of the the bright almost evangelion colors of purples and and greens and everything i really like what i see here he looks great too. The bl the bludgeon obviously is the winner between the two, but between getting the Super Seven Bonsai Tron and this one, if you're a fan of this extremely obscure character, now you're definitely getting his fix uh, in terms of product and really reveals and everything. The very last one we have here, and it's a concept art. It's not 100% complete yet, and it is that of the Black Arachnia. Now, what I find fascinating about this one is. It's general shape and silhouette, even the way that the, the I guess we'll call it the spider uh, legs, the way that they arch upward. I'm telling you, it feels so much like the Transformers animated Black Arachnia, and even much so when they took that mold and then retooled it into the Sakamoto Transformer Legends Black Arachnia. I get a very similar vibe to that. Now, Sakamoto also known for making very sexy kind of female Transformer characters, so it's probably invoking from Sakamoto stuff, mixed with the Derek Wyatt design that also had a very thin, sexy kind of Black Arachnia character. You put 
put the two together with the pretty much the flame toys kind of style and the uh, Farai model kit kind of design for female characters. And you got the Black Arachnia one here. I think it looks great. I love Black Arachnia. I love Beast Wars. Also going to be something that's going to be on my radar for sure to pick up. These Farai model kits have been always really, really cool. And just to cover the last of the Farai model kits, they had on display the, both the final version of the Windblade, which by the way, the Windblade is going to be shipping out soon, November 21st. She's going for about 50 bucks, $49.99, so that's pretty affordable for a really good looking figure of Windblade with tons of articulation and interchangeable stuff. So they had the final product on display, but next to her, they also had the prototype on display of RC, and she looks spectacular too. She looks really good. It's only in the gray protos, so obviously all the gray is going to make all the details and everything pop. And she looks looks great. I, I know, again, there's people that are going to complain about how these designs are, but the guys look buff and, 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 and bold, and the girls look thin and sexy. It's just the, the pretty much the expected beauty that is of, you know, culture. Pick up any romance novel in Walmart and look at the cover, and you're going to see a big buff guy with no shirt on, and you're going to see a thin, you know, shapely woman. It's just going to be how it is, and that's what the Japanese love, and that's what the Japanese are going to do. And speaking of buff and bold, let's talk about their also, because you have the Farai model that I just discussed, all the model kit stuff. What about their e detailed high-end action figures in their Kurukara Kuri series, which is that of their jazz that they had on display as a prototype. Now again, let's think about what we know of jazz historically. When we the, when people think of jazz, they think of the 1984 cartoon, the Fleiro Deary design, you know, doesn't even have the doors, very thin, very svelte. So Where's my, you know, complaining male Transformer fans going like, hey, why is Jazz all buff and wide stanced here with this big crotch piece and all muscular? You know what? I don't care. It's a different take on Jazz. We're allowed to have different takes. And this is a muscular, defining, almost Gundam-esque, you know, I almost feel like... Uh, Kunio, the guy who designed like a lot of the stuff for Gundam 0083, I feel like he almost had a take in some of this. But it's a very cool jazz, has a shoulder cannon, it has, you know, kibble on the side of the arm. So there's there's the suggestion that it has, you know, the influences of the 1984 toy with some mixtures of the show design and then just kind of blazing that all out in an almost Obari slash Studio Ox kind of style. And still having the Porsche elements there. I like it. I like it a lot. It looks really cool. And hey, it, it gives an, you know a different take on the character. We can't all have the same Porsche you know, kind of design in the same kind of boring way forever. It's a different take on it. There's going to be a market for it. People are going to like it. It's going to be super articulated. It's going to be posable. It's going to be very photogenic. And people are going to love it, just like the model kit stuff too, whether it be Bonsai Tron, whether it be Bludgeon, whether it be RC or Windblade, all of this stuff is going to look spectacular. And if you love it, don't feel bad about loving it. It's really cool stuff. I enjoy it. I love it. And I don't care what other people have to say. I've, I, I've said this before, but sometimes I feel the people that have a problem with this kind of stuff, it's not that they have a problem with the product. I think the problem is a little deeper than just the product. But that's a whole other story. But either way, this is some really cool stuff. Let me know what you think about this. I dig it a lot, especially that that bludgeon. That bludgeon is is sexy as hell. <laughs> it looks really good. I, I'm a big fan of Simon Furman, you know, late Marvel stuff. So stuff like bludgeon, uh, night night um, night beat, and and all of that kind of stuff. I, anytime you lean into those characters, you you got my attention. So that's really cool. I dig it a lot. Let me know what you think, and we're gonna definitely have more stuff this weekend coming from this convention in Hong Kong. And uh, stay tuned. <laughs>